let go to go to Mars, it'll be far more dangerous. There are a lot of aliens, well, the invasion ship slash, uh... Elon Musk has finally come out to let the world know that everything you have believed about Mars so far is entirely wrong. For decades, experts have been looking into the possibility of life on Mars, but that's not all Musk sees. Think about it. The world might soon fall victim to a massive catastrophe, and what will happen when every single human is dead? Well, Musk isn't going to let that happen. Join us as we explore everything Musk has to say about Mars. How did it begin? You might be able to tell just from how he acts, but Musk has always been obsessed with Mars. When he was really young, you could probably find him buried in different kinds of sci-fi books. Even then, he was busy dreaming about humans living on the red planet, and when adulthood finally came, Musk saw a chance to make that dream real. But what was the big deal about Mars? Why is Musk so fixated on it? For him, Mars represents this wild frontier that has never been meticulously explored before, and Musk wants to be the one to conquer it. Here's how he actually made up his mind. Before SpaceX ever became a thing, Musk got involved with the Mars Society. He even gave a talk at one of their events and mentioned an idea called Mars Oasis. This meant that he wanted to grow plants on Mars to get people excited about space again, but something had to facilitate that project, right? Musk tried to get a hold of a Russian rocket for his Mars Oasis project, but there was a setback. The Russians didn't want to be a part of the entire thing. You can probably guess that Musk wasn't very happy about that, but he didn't just sit around and sulk. This was his cue to conclude that maybe he should have his own rockets. From there, Musk's vision started to turn into a reality. What started as a little PR stunt became this massive mission to build a whole civilization on Mars. This is when the journey of SpaceX truly began. Now, sure, Musk's got a vision to begin life on Mars. But before this, what did the world think about Mars? The possibility of life on Mars. When we dive into all the information that we've gathered about Mars, it opens up a whole world of possibilities about whether life ever existed there. First up, Mars might have always been a barren wasteland, despite having the right ingredients for life. Like early Earth did, maybe the conditions just never clicked into place. Three billion years ago, the sun went on a rampage, stripping away Mars' atmosphere and any hope of liquid water. This idea is the most cautious take. It hinges on all those maybe life tests turning out to be dead ends or just picking up some weird contamination. Until we've got solid proof one way or the other, this theory is just a theory, with no room for being proved anything more. Now, here's a different scenario. Mars could have been full of life once upon a time, but then everything went downhill. Maybe it used to be a world with thick air, stable water, and all the trimmings for life to thrive. But then Mars' atmosphere vanished, leaving the planet high and dry. That wipeout could have wiped out any life too. If we start digging into Mars's rocky history, maybe we'll stumble upon fossilized clues that tell the tale of life's rise and fall. But it's not over yet. There's another existing theory out there. Mars might have had life way back then, but contrary to what most people think, it's not all gone. There might still be life underground somewhere on Mars, but we just don't know where it is. Maybe they're just waiting for the right moment to pop out and reveal themselves to humans. Imagine if tiny critters are living beneath the Martian surface, moving around in the sand just a stone's throw, away from our rovers. We're talking microscopic stuff here, nothing too big or noticeable. But even the tiniest life forms would be a game changer for science. Now, here's another theory for you. What if Earth was the reason life actually began on Mars? You know how sometimes stuff gets flung into space during a big cosmic collision? Well, 65 million years ago, Earth got smacked really hard by a space rock, and the fallout might have reached Mars. It is possible that during this collision, bits and pieces of Earth got to Mars, and maybe those earthly travelers settled down and started their own Martian colony. And here's the last crazy theory. What if we accidentally sent some Earth creatures to Mars? This would mean that our space program unknowingly gave a ride to our microbes, all the way to the red planet. It would be pretty fascinating if we finally uncover signs of life on Mars, only to realize it's actually our own germs we brought along for the ride. 
Sure, it would ruin everything for astrologers all over the world, but here's the thing. People haven't just been sitting in wait to figure out what's up with Mars. We've been sending out rovers and orbiters, all in the hopes of cracking the Martian life code. Will we find signs of life, past or present? And if we do, are they related to us Earthlings or totally different? The possibilities are vast. Maybe life started on Earth and spread to Mars. Or maybe it went the other way around. Heck, maybe life existed on both planets way before we showed up. Elon Musk has been one of the most prominent figures when it comes to finding the answers to these questions. But there's something different about Musk's approach. While the entire world sees Mars as a group of questions that are tough to answer, Musk sees the planet as possibly the only way for human survival. The human race in danger. Back in the day, Earth was being constantly bombarded by asteroids. These fiery collisions actually shaped our planet into what it is today. Since then, things have calmed down quite significantly. But that doesn't mean that an asteroid can never collide with Earth again. Nobody can give you that guarantee. Plus, in today's time, we still get hit by things in space, even if the impact is not as disastrous as it used to be. Most of the time, microscopic dust particles bump into our planet instead of massive fiery collisions. But sometimes, a big asteroid might still manage to get a bit too close to Earth for our comfort levels. What happened to the dinosaurs has been a fascinating horror story for quite a while. They were wiped out by an asteroid 65 million years ago. Because it happened such a long time ago, nobody worries about something similar happening to Earth once again. But then, in 2013, Russia had a very close encounter with a meteor called Chelyabinsk. It came toward the country with 60 times the speed of sound and made a massive sound in the atmosphere. The size of this meteorite was actually 20 meters wide. And do you want to guess how much it weighed? Well, 13,000 metric tons. The impact of this meteorite was devastating. It left thousands of people injured and hundreds of buildings were destroyed. So let us ask you the question once again, what if we face a major asteroid threat today? Does the Earth hold the capacity to handle such a big catastrophe? Probably not. We haven't gotten to a point in our technology where we can save ourselves or dodge a massive meteorite coming our way, and the destruction of human life would then become inevitable. And this is exactly what Musk has been talking about. It's almost a given that sooner or later, Earth is going to be facing a large asteroid. But that's not the entirety of the situation there are several other potential threats looming around the corner. These include deadly diseases and volcanic eruptions. These are scary because, within mere seconds, the entire human race could be turned to ashes. There would be no going back from that. Musk believes that it's to become a multi-planet species. Let's think about Earth like a hard drive, storing everything, every song, every book, every little thought or memory. Plus, it's home to every living thing, like a giant Word document saved on that hard drive. But here's the part where it gets scary. This hard drive has crashed before. A virus here, a collision there, and two-thirds of the population was gone. So, what would a smart generation of humans do? Well, they'd come up with a backup option. Elon Musk's ideology is that the entire world collectively needs a plan B, a safety net, and something to fall back on when things get impossible to handle. And this plan B, in Musk's eyes, is a colony on Mars. But how will that vision actually come about? First of all, there was a thorough look into what life on Mars could truly mean, and soon it evolved into something much more, the SpaceX Red Dragon. In 2011, SpaceX teamed up with NASA's Ames Research Center to come up with a plan. They wanted to send a mission to Mars to hunt for signs of life, both past and present. They called it Red Dragon, and it was all about changing up SpaceX's Dragon capsule to carry cargo to Mars and even make way for a human Mars mission. The original idea was to use a Dragon module, add some nifty instruments, and drill beneath the Martian surface to scoop up samples of water ice. The whole plan was supposed to cost less than $400 million, but NASA had some big goals for this mission. They wanted to sniff out signs of life, scope out Mars's underground living conditions, and get an idea about the planet's icy secrets. Plus, they had wanted to test out some fancy tech for future human missions. These included entry, descent, and landing demos, but that wasn't all. 
They also wanted to scout out potential hazards and even work with some in situ resource utilization. Then came 2014, and they were planning on using Red Dragon to get samples from Mars and bring them back to Earth. Just two years later in 2016, SpaceX shifted. They decided to use a Dragon capsule to test out some new Mars technology, like landing gizmos. They were all set for a 2018 launch, with NASA fully supporting them in the events. But then, there came a massive barrier. SpaceX pushed the brakes on the propulsive landing for Dragon 2, which meant Red Dragon couldn't touch down on Mars anymore. Instead, they shifted gears to focus on a bigger, better landing setup for their ginormous starship. In 2017, Elon Musk officially announced propulsive landing was no longer happening. SpaceX was shifting its focus to perfecting Starship's landing technique, leaving Red Dragon in the dust. But what was this Starship? You'll soon find out. SpaceX takes up the challenge. SpaceX is leading the challenge of making Mars our next home. But how are they doing that? The very first thing they've gotten themselves on is developing all of the proper technology that would be needed to set themselves up on the Red Planet. The goal is to create a colony on Mars that would be bustling with human life, but getting there won't be easy. We're talking major leaps in spacecraft and rocketry tech, all of which are necessary before we can even think about taking the plunge. Plus, Mars isn't exactly perfect for sustaining human life at this point. It's a whole different game when compared to Earth, so Musk definitely has his work cut out for him. SpaceX isn't about to back down from the challenge either. They came up with the Starship spacecraft specifically for the Mars colonization project. But how is it special? Well, it's huge, reusable, and it's built to shuttle cargo and crew to and from Mars. Beyond this, Musk has also got plans to terraform Mars. If you don't know what that means, he wants to change up the planet's environment to make it feel like home. This would happen when things get warmed up and the atmosphere becomes nice and breathable. These aren't just dreams that Musk is planning to work on sometime in the future. Instead, he's fully dedicated to moving humans to Mars within his lifetime. But how will he do so much? He's starting as soon as he possibly can with the plan to send the first crewed mission to Mars by 2024. Sure, most plans can change, but SpaceX is well caught up and ready to achieve the next milestone without any delays. Once humans do end up on Mars, Musk has a lot to say about what life there will be life. The one thing that he has promised is that it's going to be more than just surviving. In his eyes, he sees humans thriving on the red planet, getting into things like mining, manufacturing, agriculture, and everything else that they've been doing on Earth. He even tossed around the idea of Martian tourism, which might be hard to imagine right now, but that's not going to stop Musk. He's not trying to convert Mars into just another version of Earth. He's actually a lot more focused on building a Martian culture from scratch, which will include new traditions and new values. But what's the biggest tool that Musk has to reach his goals? The Mars Colonial Transporter. October 2012 marked the very first time that Elon Musk openly claimed that he wanted to build a rocket that could be used again and again. He promised that this thing, which was yet to be created, would be way better than anything SpaceX had before. Soon, he named it MCT. But what did these letters mean? The truth didn't come out until a year later in 2013, when he finally revealed that MCT stood for Mars Colonial Transporter. Just like that, it was confirmed that this spaceship would be the backbone of the entire project of colonizing Mars. But how powerful was this spaceship? What exactly made it capable enough to transport the entire human race to Mars? Gwyn Shotwell hinted that this rocket could actually carry anywhere from 150 to 200 tons of material into low Earth orbit. But what about the Mars trip? They anticipated that the spaceship could carry up to 100 tons of cargo and passengers, now, if that hasn't managed to impress you, the engine of the MCT surely won't fail. Tom Mueller, the man who has been behind SpaceX's engine development, claimed that they could actually attach nine Raptor engines onto one MCT booster or spacecraft. This means that the MCT would be a ship at least 10 meters wide, with as many as three cores and no less than 27 booster engines. In terms of power, not a thing could compete against this thing. But by the time it was 2016, the Mars Colonial Transporter changed to become the Interplanetary Transport System, ITS. But why did they have to shift the name like that? Had Musk given up hope? Well, it was quite the opposite. 
They changed the name because they realized that the spaceship would actually go beyond Mars. Elon Musk revealed a lot more about this space mission. According to him, there would be a brand new rocket with two stages, a reusable booster, and a spacecraft. Plus, it'd use tanks made of carbon composite stuffed with liquid methane and oxygen. Now, of course, Musk's team had to go beyond everybody's expectations, so they came up with three different versions of the same spaceship. One was supposed to be for the crew, one for cargo, and one for refueling. All of these versions would work collectively, helping sustain each other through the journey. Of course, not everyone was convinced by the idea of the ITS transporting humans to masks. It was a grand plan, and it made people skeptical. Most didn't believe that they could trust the technology to this extent. But don't rely on the skeptics, because the ITS boasted some seriously crazy technological aspects. The booster is 12 meters wide and 77.5 meters tall, and it's been powered by 42 engines, which is more power than anyone can fathom. The spaceship could produce a thrust of up to 128 Nemen at liftoff. Plus, it's super efficient because it's built to land back on the launch pad for a quick refill and relaunch. The second stage fully focuses on long haul flights with three sea level engines and six optimized for space. And lastly comes the tanker, hauling up to 380 tons of propellant to low earth orbit in one go. After topping off the tanks, it's back to earth for another repeat of the same thing. But things were yet to develop further. The Big Falcon rocket. In September 2017, Musk introduced a brand new launch beast, calling it the BFR. He had big plans for it, and he wanted to send the first cargo missions to Mars as early as 2022. The goal was to scope out the scene, find water, and set up shop for future flights. And by 2024, he was eyeing four more ships, two carrying crew and two hauling cargo and gear for a propellant plant. Elon really had it all planned out. BFR was all about balance, Musk and his team had to juggle things like payload mass, landing capabilities, and reliability. In the end, the ship was packing six Raptor engines, a combo of sea level and vacuum ones, making it one of the most powerful spaceships out there. By September 2017, SpaceX had already test-fired Raptors for 20 minutes. That's some serious engine action, and the plan was to keep on pushing, aiming for even higher pressure and more power. Meanwhile, Musk was playing around with manufacturing sites across the US, including California, Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. And by early 2018, they were already cranking out prototypes and setting up shop in Los Angeles. The BFR was designed to be a towering 106 meters tall with a sleek stainless steel frame. This upper stage is called the Big Falcon Ship, or BFS for short. It had all the bells and whistles, including a nifty delta wing and split flaps for precision control during landing. Plus, it could handle a wide range of payloads, from cargo to passengers, all in one swoop. But SpaceX had a change of heart. In late 2018, they swapped out carbon composites for good old stainless steel. Why? Well, it's cheaper, stronger, and can handle the heat better than anything else. Plus, it means no more heat shield headaches, then, in 2019, SpaceX had a new name for their brilliant creation, Starship. They rebranded the whole thing, with the booster now known as Super Heavy. But there's more to Starship than you think you know. The Recent Adventures of Starship On March 14, 2024, made its massive entrance into space. It's been a long road of secret projects, big booms, and regulatory hoops. But finally, SpaceX has managed to nail it. They've proven they can not only build the tallest, mightiest rocket ever, but also send it soaring past our atmosphere. But the greatness of this moment was soon squashed by reality. Just when things seemed perfect, Starship literally disappeared on its way back down to Earth. SpaceX lost contact with it, and the rocket was nowhere to be seen. But it's okay, because failures are just stepping stones to success in SpaceX's book. They're not very worried about this because they've managed to achieve a milestone that they have never even gotten close to before. But the launch day was nothing short of groundbreaking. Starship, placed right on top of a stainless steel super heavy booster, towered over the crowd at SpaceX's launch pad in South Texas. And with a massive roar, its 33 Raptor engines lit up and sent it shooting past the clouds into space. 
It's safe to say that they probably hadn't expected much from the launch because the Starship has had its fair share of flops in the past. Astonishingly, this time it aced the test, and there were no mid-air explosions or anything. It was just a smooth ride into space. As it cruised above the Earth, Starship did its thing for about an hour before returning back to Earth. And that's when the Starship vanished from our radars at around 40 miles above the ground. It was so close to being the perfect launch, but in the end, it was gone. But Elon Musk isn't discouraged even a little bit. He still sees fleets of starships shuttling thousands of people to Mars every year in the near future, building cities and turning us into a multi-planetary species. SpaceX already has plans moving forward. They're eyeing point-to-point -point flights on Earth, giant satellite deployments, and deep space missions. They're even cooking up tanker ships to refuel Starship in orbit, making Mars colonization a whole lot easier. Now, Elon is so confident about the Starship working out that he's got this grand plan to send the rocket to Mars in just five years. He thinks that the test flight was so successful that the Starship will be ready for crewed missions to the moon by 2026. As of now, Musk's talking about shifting one million people to Mars, but before that, they'll be warming up the red planet using reflectors from its moons, Phobos and Deimos. But that's not the extent of how far-reaching Musk's brain is. He's thinking big, talking about building up some serious infrastructure to make sure humanity doesn't just survive but thrives out there in space. There will be lunar bases, Martian cities, and the whole thing to make sure that humans don't feel displaced. According to Musk, trips to Mars should be as routine as hopping on a flight across the country. But to make it happen, we've got to have moon bases and cities on Mars. The whole thing's gonna cost a lot of money. We're talking billions of dollars, especially in the early days. But this isn't the only trouble that might come Musk's way during the process of this relocation to Mars. The challenges of Musk's plans. Imagine our living on Mars, and suddenly, your bones start feeling a bit jelly-like. That's because Mars has way less gravity than Earth, which can mess with your muscles and bones. Plus, if you're out there trying to get a good night's sleep without a proper day-night cycle, it will be literally impossible to remain healthy. To keep humans healthy and safe on Mars, SpaceX will have to come up with some very advanced technology, which would include medical gadgets that can diagnose and treat illnesses on Mars. Plus, we'll need systems to make sure our mental health stays in check, too. Then there's the fact that living on Mars means you need to have air to breathe, water to drink, and food to eat but you can't just pop down to the corner store for groceries on Mars. It's gonna be a task to figure out how to grow your own food and recycle everything from water to air. SpaceX will have to get inventive here because humans will need to grow vegetables in Martian soil and figure out how to turn Martian air and water into a form we can actually use. And there can be no room for error because our entire lives will be relying on this system and we can't forget the money element. Building cities on Mars won't be cheap, and Musk thinks it could cost anywhere from $100 billion to $10 trillion. That's a lot of money, and SpaceX definitely can't foot the bill all on its own. They're gonna need some help from governments and maybe even some deep-pocketed investors. Do you think humans could get to Mars in the next five years? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.